Welcome to Media Shift's Digital Media Brief, brought to you by Next Space and Next Kids Coworking and Childcare in San Francisco. I'm Mark Glazer with guests Hadas Gold from Politico, Megan McCarty from KPCC, and Josh Stewart from Sunlight Foundation. The election season is upon us in the United States, and once again, social media is an outlet for organizing, reaction to debates, and political gab. But how important will social media be to the outcome of the primaries and the presidential race? While more Americans than ever are following political figures on social media, they're also hesitant to post themselves on controversial topics. Adas, how is this election cycle different than past ones when it comes to social media? Oh, this election cycle is different from past election cycles in that um, you're seeing a lot of the news driven by what candidates are posting on social media, especially candidates such as Donald Trump, who is very raw and authentic whenever he tweets. Um, oftentimes, his his retweets or tweets or Twitter storms, whatever you want to whatever you pick of the day are really driving news articles um, and he doesn't need to, he hasn't bought any single advertisement yet uh, because he gets all this free media just by going online and he has said this himself, he said I don't need the Wall Street Journal, I don't need the New York Times, all I need is Twitter. Um, he's actually producing, you call them ads, they are um, little video ads, on Inst just posting them on Instagram and they'll automatically get picked up by different news outlets. Now other candidates probably won't if they do the same thing, they, they probably won't get as much attention because they're not Donald Trump and they're not number one in the polls right now. But that just goes to show you how much uh, social media is really affecting the traditional way that campaigns are run. And Josh, how important is data for tracking campaign financing this time? I think this year, especially when you see in, when we are going to see an unprecedented flow of money from into super PACs, into candidate committee, and now into the, these so-called dark money nonprofit groups that can spend money around elections. I think it's incredibly important that um, we tap into the data from the Election Commission, the FCC, um, and other tools in order to, you know, help reporters <laughs> basically sift through all of this stuff. Um, there's been some good reporting already um, at the sunlightfoundation.com. There's tons of tools that uh, both reporters and individuals alike can use. Um, and I think this year, sadly more than any other, we're going to see sort of the money in politics really reach, you know, reach, you know an unprecedented level. And tracking it's going to be incredibly important. And Megan, tell us about the Make Our Care campaign that you did at KPCC. So we chose one voter who had never voted in a local election before and tried to make him vote and used the social pressure of social media and the hashtag make Al care to try to influence him to vote. Uh, you know, we had candidates weighing in on social media making videos for him. The mayor of Los Angeles made a video for him. We had, you know, thousands of our Twitter followers pressuring Al to vote and in fact he did vote. And uh, all of this media attention and the social media campaign um, also was successful in kind of amplifying um, the concerns of a demographic that isn't usually represented in local elections because there is such low voter turnout and there are usual suspects who usually turn out to the polls who are who the candidates uh, and politicians usually speak to. So it also kind of broadened the scope of the election in that way. Well, thanks for joining us for the digital media brief from Media Shift, brought to you by Next Space and Next Kids. Learn more about their pioneering program combining co-working and childcare at nextspace.us/nextkids. We'll catch you next week.